All I, All I can say is that, is that the, the fake, fake news just doesn't get it, it do they? they don't and the fake news right now really is Russia. Uh, they haven't been telling their people the truth. And when the truth tries to get slipped in there, everyone freaks out. Take a look. Российский премьер подчеркнул, надо усилить сотрудничество в рамках союзного государства, а на совещании в правительстве обсуждали, как сохранить доступность лекарницы не должны. So in America, if you did that, well, you see it all the time. People, that's like a Baba Booey situation. Over there, this is as bad as it gets, and she is in potentially a great deal of trouble. Her name is Marina, and uh, she was arrested, subject of a pre-investigation check, whatever that is, interrogated by police for 14 hours, just fine so far. Look. She seems happy right now, by the way, and here she is with her lawyer. We're just afraid that she's going to be shipped off to the gulag or be fed a little bit of uh, arsenic for lunch. We hope she's okay. Uh, the whole world knows what her name is and knows what she looks like. Again, in America, you'd go on the Jimmy Fallon show after something like this. Here, she's in big-time danger. Also, did you hear about the TikTokers who met with President uh, Biden, or at least his team, at the White House I can't figure out these TikTokers. They're pretty ordinary. I don't find it that entertaining, but they have like gazillions of followers. And now they're armed with Biden administration talking points. I had the opportunity to ask the White House why gas down the street is $7. And here's what they said. The obvious reason we are getting out of a two-year pandemic, when use goes up, price goes up. There is a substantial amount of Russian propaganda and just misinformation on this app. And thankfully, the White House is reaching out to creators to dispel that misinformation. So they said that they hope that this crisis at least raises the public consciousness around geopolitical issues throughout the world, and that even though Americans may not be proud of other things the United States has done globally, that they hope that we can look back on this moment and see how the United States rallied the West to stand up against Russia and be proud of that. All right. Eat your heart out, Walter Cronkite. Uh, look, just because you're cool doesn't mean you're hip. All right. Doesn't mean you're hip and you just spouted off a bunch of talking points. And quite frankly, you should have dug a little bit deeper. Meanwhile, throughout all this stuff, you know what I've been thinking about? The phony impeachment of Donald Trump over that phone call to uh, Zelensky. Uh, just when it became a public issue, Trump released the transcript, the Trump White House, and everybody could see it. It was so official and it was obvious in moments that this was not inappropriate. It certainly wasn't in, uh, impeachable. But how much time as a country did we waste on it? Do you remember those hearings, the trial? It was all a waste of time. Think about what we could have done for the world, for Ukraine, if instead of debating this ridiculous momentary phone call, it wasn't ridiculous, it was fine, just doing something for the security of Europe. Our lawmakers are kind of supposed to do things like that. Think of serious issues going forward. What were we doing last summer? January 6th. Remember that uh, those cops? It was all about January 6th. Why did they choose these issues? Because they're easy to understand. There's a narrative. I mean, talking about arms shipments to, uh, I mean, talking about helping Ukraine, genuinely helping Ukraine, enhancing Eastern European security. That's boring. This stuff, it's sexy. It's a scandal. And oh, by the way, while this stuff was going on, what was Vladimir Putin doing? He had just met with Joe Biden, okay? And uh, I think the wheels were turning. Actually, last July, he put out a very interesting, uh, basically an announcement of what he wanted to do. Take a look. Uh, it, number one, one fact is crystal clear. Russia was robbed indeed. Talking about Ukraine. All right, next. If economic ties between our countries had been retained, Ukraine would enjoy the benefit of tens of billions of dollars. Next, finally, I am confident that true sovereignty of Ukraine is possible only in partnership with Russia. This is code for he wants Ukraine back. All right, he said it. And it's interesting, this letter came out right after he met with Joe Biden, okay? They had that, that meeting over there. And you tell me, I just don't think that uh, Vladimir Putin was particularly impressed, all right? When they sat together, he was like, I've got this guy figured out. That's my sense. That's my takeaway. 
Once again, this country focuses on the trivial when it should be focused on the important. Our obsession with scandal, with silly stuff like that phone call, it takes our eye off the ball. You know who actually concluded this? The 9-11 Commission. September 11, 2001 happened in part, and they say this in the report, because our Congress doesn't worry about oversight, they worry about scandal. Issues designed to get maximum media attention. That's where they spend most of their time. Now, there are some exceptions to this. Once again, Mark, everybody wants to know Fly Zone. There's a lot that goes into that, and the one guy who seems to understand that the most is Marco Rubio, Republican from Florida. Are you and your colleagues now more open to a no-fly zone? You know, the, the look, a no-fly zone has become a catchphrase. I'm not sure a lot of people fully understand what that means. That means flying AWACS 24 hours a day. That means the willingness to shoot down and engage Russian airplanes in the sky. That means, frankly, you can't put those planes up there unless you're willing to knock out the anti-aircraft uh, systems that the Russians have deployed, and not just in Ukraine, but in Russia and also in, in, in Belarus. So basically, a no-fly zone, it, uh, if people understood what it means, it means World War III. He's a very thoughtful lawmaker, and he's done his homework. And I appreciate that, especially as somebody who once flew in a no-fly zone over Iraq, Operation Southern Watch in the late 1990s. There's a lot that goes into that, and it's not so easy. Maybe we'll do it, maybe we won't, but he understands the ramifications. And I think everybody else needs to be reminded, me, you, everybody, that when it came to protecting Ukraine, Donald Trump was the guy. Trump administration decided to provide additional assistance to Ukraine in the form of lethal anti-tank missiles as they fight against Russian-backed separatists. This administration has given lethal weapons, the Javelin anti-tank system, to Ukraine. This administration has provided lethal weapons to the citizens of Ukraine to fight Russia aggression. He did. You can look it up. Sometimes it's hard to find, but he did. And you can also look it up. It's definitely hard to find that Obama Biden turned off that lethal aid that Ukraine desperately needed. President Obama met with Poroshenko afterwards at the White House, said only non-lethal aid, however, would be provided. We are providing um, non-lethal assistance. Uh, but the fact is, militarily, um, as Crimea demonstrated, uh, Ukraine is outgunned. Vice President Biden heads to Ukraine this week, offering moral support to go along with the non-lethal aid pledged by the United States. That's something, isn't it? It really is pivotal. And they never talk about it. It's all downplayed.